My name is Brita, webmistress of the dark, and today I'm going to show you how to make my awful arachnids. They are edible spiders made from royal icing. So first, of course, we're going to need some royal icing. What we need are three egg whites or equivalent amount of meringue powder, a half teaspoon of cream of tartar, one pound of powdered sugar, and we'll need black food coloring for later because I want my spiders as black as possible. So I'm going to start with the three egg whites. I've already separated them. I just use normal egg whites as the classic royal icing recipe that I found in a vintage Atiko decorator set. Then I add the half teaspoon cream of tartar and I mix that together first before I add the sugar. Just to make sure it's blended thoroughly. After your egg whites are foamy like this, so the cream of tartar is mixed in completely with the egg whites, then it's time to add your powdered sugar. Go ahead and add the whole entire pound of sugar in there. That's usually one box of the small size of powdered sugar, how it's sold. And then you're just going to keep beating it until it is as stiff as possible. slowly at first so the powdered sugar doesn't fly all over the place. Once you get it incorporated then it's time to up your speed to maximum with turbo boost if you have it. Since this is such a large batch of royal icing we're not going to make all this into spiders because that's a lot of spiders. So what you can do is reserve some of this for your cookies at this level and then to keep going with the rest and make it stiffer and adding black for your spiders. That's often what I do. Here you can see we have reached just about the stiff peak stage. It will hold its shape, but it will flop over just slightly. I've stopped this early because this is when I'm going to add the black food coloring, since I know I need to mix it into the rest so it's going to have even more beating time and will get even stiffer. I use gel food coloring because it doesn't water down your mixture. Paste food coloring often is hard to incorporate into liquid mixtures. You're most likely going to have to use a lot of black to get all of the slicing as dark as you want. Yes, we might even need more than this much. It really does take a lot of black food coloring to take. I know this doesn't look very black yet, but I have used almost half a bottle of this food coloring getting it this far. Now, the other thing about royal icing is that it will dry darker than it looks right now. So this probably will be black enough for most people. It will probably be a dark charcoal color that will look black enough in the Halloween party lighting. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and save my expensive black gel icing for another time. Now that the icing is as black as we can make it and as stiff as we're going to get, it's time to put it in a piping bag and set up to make our spiders. Now that our royal icing is all mixed as stiff as we can make it and is the color we want, keep a moist towel over your bowl because the royal icing hardens at room temperature in normal moisture, so you want to make sure that it stays flexible while you're working with it. So I have my towel over the bowl. I'm going to go ahead, a piping bag is all ready. I have my normal number two, just normal piping tip in the bottom there. I use the plastic piping bags. I can get a couple of uses out of them by washing them thoroughly in between, but it's a lot easier to use so the dye doesn't get all over your hands and it will stay a lot longer for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the icing. Don't, put, don't try and shove all your icing in one piping bag. You only want enough for a, hand, a good handful for you to get a good grip on without making your hand too tired. So the trick is getting it down into the bottom of the bag without getting it all over the top of the bag. So I'm just going to use a couple spoonfuls. Put my towel back over to keep it moist and keep it from drying. Notice I had folded the edge of the bag around like a cup so that that hopefully didn't get icing on it. So when I put the bag together, put my icing down to 
twist it on the top above where all the icing is. Twist all the air bubbles out. Test a little bit. There we go. I've got icing good to go. Here's the setup I use for piping my spiders. I like to use wax paper because I want a surface that's non-stick that I can peel my spiders off of when I'm ready to use them for decorating. If I use just a non-stick cookie sheet, it's sometimes you need to be careful working the spider off of the sheet so that their legs stay intact. It's easier to peel the paper off of the back of the spider. You could also use a Silpat non-stick silicone baking sheet but I only have a couple sill pads and I plan on using them a lot for my Halloween party baking. So I can leave the spiders on the wax paper all the way until I'm ready to use them on the day of the party without sacrificing a sill pad to that entire use. I also here have a paper towel tube cut in half so that I just have a little arc, a shallow arc. And I've taken a piece, a small piece of wax paper and put that over the paper towel tube because I'm going to make spiders that are actually a little more 3D than just the flat ones. Flat ones are a lot easier to deal with. They're a lot um, less stress on the legs when you set them around on the table for decorating, but to have a couple 3D ones is kind of cool. So why not do some of each? The whole batch of royal icing, the three egg whites batch, is way too much. Your hand will get sore and you will never use that many spiders <laughs> to make an entire batch of royal icing into spiders. But I made about a third of a batch of royal icing and still gotten about three dozen spiders, which is plenty. Uh, my hand will get sore <laughs> before the end of piping all of those. I often do them a little every night. So let's go ahead and get started piping the spiders. 